All right, so our framing is all done up here. Um, we basically, the next step is going to be getting all of our wiring done. I'm going to want to point a couple things out here. So this is our, our shed dormer roof here and our steep, steep side. Um, you can see that our, our rafters are actually just a little bit too short. And, uh, you know, we could have made, we could have made these come together by shortening up our eaves a little bit on, you know, on the top and on, on the dormer and on the, and on the, um, the, the, the steep eave down here. What we probably should have done is measured, um, make sure that, you know, we leave the eave short enough basically to, to let, you know, our joists come together at the peak. It's not a big deal. We're going to put steel straps that go all the way over the peak and hold it together. So it's not a structural issue at all. Um, but here you can see kind of what we did, which is, um, you know, just, we just cut these like I demonstrated earlier. Um, at the peak and, and then we nail them in place and so we'll do, do our straps later but um, also over here we completed our dormer roof um, on this you know we, we had to do our framing in, inside of our inside of our on top of our um, false overhang first and then we ran our our TNG up and uh, just just with a gap underneath it here to run our plywood so our plywood will, will actually come up underneath here and uh, we're going to cut this off then at the angle of this roof here and uh, slide our plywood up underneath that. But so that's how that works. Just the, the, the uh, sequence, you know, is you got to, you got to do the tongue and groove and framing of our, of our two um, false overhangs until we could, you know, before we can do the overhang of the dormer up on top. So once that was done, you know, we did, did the rim and, and framed it. So we've got a couple of our cans installed already here. You can see, couple of them there. We're going to continue with that today and it's, it's not there's not very much to this cabin for wiring so we're going to get it wired and then we're going to be ready to spray foam this whole roof. We also cut all our vents in as you can see there. Those have all been cut in um, so we got we to strap the, the peaks um, still and spray foam it, insulate it. So for insulation you know these these plans or these homes are specked out. The floor plans are drawn with with an R38 spray foam insulation. If you want to get that same R value R38 with a with a fiberglass bat, I think it's like a 12 inch or 11 inch bat, or at least you know maybe it's nine or ten. I'm not sure, but it's basically it's thick enough to where you pretty much have to go with like a 12 inch roof, you know 12 inch uh, BCIs or, or you know a thick really thick roof to be able to get that fiberglass in there. Um, if you order the cabin and the roof materials from us. It's going to be it's going to be coming with you know these nine and a half inch BCIs, so you really can't uh, do fiberglass unless you want to sacrifice R value, which you know most places is not is not code. Um, so spray foam is the best the best option all all around. Um, Home Depot does sell some DIY spray foam kits um, that might work. By the time you buy enough to do a cabin this size, you're probably going to be just as expensive as hiring a you know, a spray foam contractor. Uh, Metal Art Log Homes offers spray foam. We have we have uh, guys that can come out and do your, your spray foam. If you're in somewhere in the local area, you know, close to Libby or Northwest Montana, Northern Idaho, uh, we can do your spray foam for you. But, um, but yeah, definitely recommend spray foam. It's obviously much superior uh, over uh, fiberglass. So yeah, we're gonna get this roof ready for spray foam. So uh, we'll get started here. We're gonna go over um, kind of how to chase wires through these holes, but again, this is a, a step that really um, you need to make sure you you know follow your local codes and hire an electrician. Um, most places you know, require a permit, so this is not a instructional video on how to wire a house. We're going to just go over some of the tips and tricks for getting wires through the holes, and you know that your electrician might be able to use or whatever. So um yeah we'll get started here okay so here we're in the loft you can see we've started the, the wiring here but basically there's there's basically three lights actually the, the floor plans show two lights i added one you know it's easy to add a light and, and kind of customize your electrical but just a box here three and a half inch box and one here and one there and uh this one this basically goes to this these lights are controlled by the switch here we've ran just the one wire from the from this outlet to our light and then we'll hook these together. So this switch, we'll, we'll turn these lights on up here. Pretty straightforward. And then down, downstairs, we'll have, you know, we have, a, we have our ceiling fan and, and then a couple of uh, other lights and then the outside lights. So 
we're gonna keep on uh, keep on running wires today, and um, get we're gonna have to we have to fish we have to fish these wires through some of these through holes that are drilled through the through the wall all the way through. So there are a couple holes in that wall. There's a hole in this wall. We're bringing wires up. All right, so we're gonna drill out. We had marked our hole here. Um, you know, when we're doing the TNG, we mark these holes so we can come back and drill them out. So you can use any kind of bit, you know, just to drill through these through the ceiling and try to access that that hole. There's the uh, three, inch and a half hole right there. So our wires will come right up that inch and a half hole into the ceiling or into the cavity, and we can run it to our lights from there. So we're gonna go fish this wire through. We'll probably come from the top down. It's easier to push the wire down. Um, sometimes, like if you have one of those snakes, like a fish tape snake, like a steel um, thing, you know, electricians would use those. You can get that down the hole pretty easily and then pull it up. But that's obviously electrician usually has that type of stuff. So um, we're gonna pull this wire up and get get it all wired up. You keep going, you're getting it. There it is. Got it. Right there, push down. Okay. And we're gonna pull up, since we need to pull two wires through this hole, we're gonna pull, use the one we got through to pull up two wires, just because it's a little bit of a pain to get them through. So we'll use the wire as a, as a pull rope. Okay, we duct taped our two wires to this wire here. Okay, go ahead, I'm gonna pull it through. So we have two wires instead of one. Yeah, the fat one goes up to the fan, which is in, I think, uh, it's in this bay right here, Eric. So go over and then up to the top. There's a hole right there by your hand, see it?
Okay, so we got our roof to a point where we're ready for our, our sheeting, our OSB plywood 5 8 OSB, and um, we've got our wiring done. Um, we've got our spray foam insulation done um, in the roof and all the heated areas, and our, our vents are drilled out here. Um, everything's good there. So we're going to start here on the porch with the, the plywood, and um, we're going to work on this side, then we'll work up the up the up our false overhangs, we'll do the other side as well, and we'll do this up here. Well, we'll do this upper part, the dormer, after the, the, after the um, false over, overhangs are, are done. So, step one, we're gonna just chalk our, we're gonna chalk our line on here for the, uh, you know, to get, the, get our first row straight. Uh, we're just gonna come off of our rim. We're gonna go, we're gonna go four foot, 48 inches, and about, about a quarter, so 48 and a quarter, 48 and an eighth, just a little bit over. We don't want our plywood to be hanging past this. It doesn't really matter if it does a little bit. Our fascia will will cover that up, so it's not a big deal. But pretty much, just um, 48 and an eighth is a good good number to go. Just gonna go like this. We're gonna mark it right there. I'm gonna take a nail. Put a nail in here. Okay, down to this side here. Same thing here. 48 and 1 8 And pull it nice and tight. Right there. And just snap that like that. There's our line. That's our, our line to, to put our plywood. So. Um, so yeah, we're gonna put a piece on here. We're gonna start at this end. This is the side we did, we did our layout from. So if I pull off this side, the outside edge, like that, I go over eight foot, we're gonna be right there in the middle of that stud or close to it. Let's see if down here is better. Yeah, right on that. We should be in the middle of this joist. I'm a little bit off there, but it's really close. Just need to make sure you're landing on the joist, so. We'll start here with a piece, and we'll just put it right on the line, and we'll uh, nail it on. Oh, there's a nail on the way there. You know, beat that in or something. Wayne forgets where his hammer is. Well, I took the <laughs> regular tool belt off. Oh, one side over here. gotcha. All right, so we're going to go flush with our end over there, and then we'll go right in the middle of our line. Yeah, it's gonna be fine on that side because we're gonna put fascia. Right. It's gonna fascia. Like right there. Okay. Alright. Okay, we good? Yep. Alright. Bingo. I guess one of you guys then. Okay, uh, give me one. I'm gonna have to hit this. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> um, here's the nails we're using. These are just uh, two and a quarter inch, uh, six or eight penny nails. These are ring shanks, I think. Um, but anyway, you can use, you know, well, you just want to check with your plan. The floor plan will, will specify. Your nailing pattern. It's usually by I think it's five, you know, five nails per um, per joist, and then probably I think the edges is the edges calls for maybe six or seven, but I just check your floor plan. It'll have a, spe a specification on that. But uh, I'm just gonna nail it on here. Um, make sure everything's nailed off good, and then obviously at the end there we're gonna have a nice nice little cut piece there. So we're just gonna measure that and uh, get ourselves a. Yeah, I cut that one, boys. Boys, I guess I put it on. All right, we've got another piece for later. So we're gonna we're gonna use a uh, we're gonna do a 48 incher. Or, yeah, 48 inch half sheet to start. That's well. 
We can use it, but we're gonna use, we're gonna need more starters anyway, more half sheets. We'll just cut one in half. Okay, rip it down to this right here, which is 36 and a half. Here we go. We want the sheet plow to be up pretty close to this right there, you know, 40. Let's go like this. We'll go. So yeah, the, the, the piece will go there. Now measure right there from that from that with your tape. Give me mine back. Measure like this. Right there, yeah. We got 40. I got 40 and a I got 40 and a half. The 40 will work, so we'll go 40. Um, and then we have to notch out a piece for this. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna kind of, you know, make sure it. We'll make sure your pieces are nice and, you know, pretty pretty close to that. Your log there. Um, obviously, if you're doing like a, a simple style roof with just two sides on it, like a simple cabin, it's obviously much easier. It's just a straight, uh, straight run all, all the way up. A um, couple of things to note here. We still need to put our straps on the peak, so we're gonna get that done here before we get too far ahead but we're gonna put our steel straps over the peak and nail those down. We also wanna make sure that we keep our plywood um, down from the peak about, about two inches. We want to keep a nice air gap, maybe a two or three, two to four inch uh, space at the top of our ridge all the way down. We don't want our plywood to come together, we wanna to keep it down. So there's like a two to four inch space there for airflow to, to be able to um, circulate. That airflow with our vented ridge cap of our final roofing, um, the, the, the air will be able to vent from the uh, peak down and out the vents at the eave. So, um, yeah, we'll make sure to do that. Um, so, yeah, we'll, do that, we'll get that done yet. And then also right here on our rim board here, we're going to cut this this piece right here. We're going to cut it at the angle of this roof uh, here. So that, so that our plywood can slide up underneath that and we'll, we'll demonstrate that but um, so the plywood will actually slide up underneath there and, and the, this will be resting on top of our of our sheeting here so we're gonna do the same thing here once we're at this stage we're gonna measure up four and or 48 and a, an eighth and then just start the exact same way and then the other side same exact thing so pretty straightforward um, just putting the sheeting on and making sure to nail everything real good per plan specs and um, here along the wall, we're just gonna get get it, you know, fairly close. So there will be some flashing here on the. Um, there's a groove here that will accept some flashing <coughs> um, later on for the um, for the roofing. So that's pretty straightforward. Just run the plywood up against that, and we get to go.
these are our straps here. They are just some steel straps. We're gonna put them over the peak here. And um, we'll just start by nailing down one side. First, I'm just, I'm just using some little nails here. You can use a joist hanger, nail gun, or um, you know, you could use screws, whatever. But there's some holes here. We're just gonna put them in. I think you wanna nail every hole. It's a lot faster with a nail gun. And there we go. So we're gonna put one on every single, every single joist here and the rim as well on the outside. We'll keep going with the sheeting here. We're going to be putting on two different materials on this roof. We're going to do an ice and water shield first on our on the bottom. So we're going to do the, the whole porch with the ice and water shield. And then we're going to do our um, the eaves just up about two foot past the wall. So up on the roof here, we'll go, you know, up until we're, uh, uh, you know, about two foot into the into the main house with um, with the uh, ice and water shield. And then we're going to use just a titanium underlayment uh, for the rest of it. So we're going to start on the bottom here. We're going to yeah, just keep going. <laughs> Once we have it in place, we're going to want to uh, so underneath. We're going to put it down. We're going to peel off that bottom, you can just pull on it, just walk this way, yep, just like that. Okay, just like that. Make sure we're right down to the edge. Razor blade works much better. We'll just make sure we're down to the bottom. Has, yeah, a little bit past is probably good. Yeah, we'll peel that off. We'll stretch it, make sure it's nice and don't have any any uh, bubbles in it, and then we can tack it down. There you go. So the same thing again from that side. You know, the same side, and um, yeah. As soon as we get to the, we'll basically cover the porch all the way with this, and we'll do our false overhangs with our other product, which is just a little thinner. You know, a little easier to work with. Um, so we'll do this with, with this. We'll do the false overhang with our uh, titanium. This is tight. It's also titanium, but it's a just it's an ice and water shield versus a just a regular roofing underlayment. Just make sure to overhang down to that line. I'll pull it up there. So another one more full roll. Oh, you just overlap it. That's fine. Yeah.
All right, we've got our two rows of our uh, ice and water shield titanium. This extends into the heated area more than two feet. It's like three feet probably that we're that we're extending inside here. So after our first couple rows, we're going to switch to this. Um, this is just a regular underlayment, and it's not sticky. And uh, we're going to roll it out. Um, want to make sure that we're hanging over the edge. And uh, we'll start by just stapling the bottom corner here. We'll roll it out. And we'll go about halfway maybe. Or pull, it, yep. pull the bottom tight on the line. And then that's good. Pull it tight here. So with this stuff, this is this this is important to get really, um, you know, just stapled on. You've got these these marks for where to where to put our staples. So you know, that's a pretty good rule of thumb to just staple at every single one of those points. So. Make sure to get a good line up all the edges and around the side and then just 